hands down. Come on, I just want you to worship. Come on, say hallelujah.
between you and your husband, yes. your husband and your wife, and God. Yes. This is not an earthly contract that suggests that when she do well, then I do well. When he do better, I do better. This is a covenant agreement when yes. you and God and regardless of how your spouse is doing or not doing, Amen. you have to stay in the agreement. Amen. This is kingdom marriage. Yes. Then last week we talked about kingdom husbands. Uh -huh. We was real clear in the three areas that they have to function in. Amen. They have to make a decision to sacrifice for you. Amen. For the ladies. Jesus dies on the cross. And every man opened their mouth and said they wanted to die. But in three days he was getting back up. So it was bigger than that. Yeah. It was the pain and the agony and the betrayal that he felt that made him pray in the garden, that made him suggest to God, I cannot do this. But not my will, your will be done. And the will of God for every husband is to never ever forsake his family. Amen. Never leave his wife. Amen. So, you may do some things to him that's wrong, that's nasty and dirty and petty and filthy, betrayal. They lied on Jesus. They spit on Jesus. They whooped it all like, no, he never done nothing wrong. But he yet says, I'll go through it for you. Now, I want you to be able to see, ladies, how important you are. Jesus compares his relationship to the church to the relationship of a male to a woman. He says, I ain't never done nothing wrong, but I let him mind me, I let him beat me, I let him beat me so bad that I won't even be recognized. <laughs> he said, they'll spit on me, he said, they'll nail me to a rugged cross, they'll put thorns in my head, pierce me in my side, nails in my feet, I do all that because the church is worth it. Amen. That's what your work is. Yeah. That a man would be willing to go through all that pain, uh -huh. all of those challenges, yeah. all of those difficulties because you are working. Uh -huh. Come on, let's help you to help me right now. Yeah. I, I, I need you to say, I'm working. Uh -huh. That's going to be a word for your husband. Uh -huh. That's going to be an encouraging word for your husband. Yeah. That when he says something to you, that makes you make a response that you won't normally say what you would have said before you hit a sermon. Now you're going to say, but I'm working. You ain't going to have to be disrespectful. You ain't going to have to be slick. You ain't going to have to be abusive with your tongue. All you're going to do is smile and say, but I'm working. Oh, no. 
not be on. Now, before we dive into this, we gotta get this, we gotta get this. What we're about to talk about, this is not the world standard. This is not the old way. <coughs> but you young ladies today, you may hear me utilize some of the word that's in the Bible, subjection. Subject to your own husband. Yeah. This is not old time religion. This is not old time way. It is the only way. Amen. It is the way. It is the creator way. Whenever you make a decision to say that it's not, that this is old, you're saying what God has spoken is not relevant in your life anymore. And I would suggest to you that the reason why divorce is high as it is is because we made a decision not to do the creator's work. Right. Right. So here it is, real quick. Ephesians 5. I'm only going to pull one text from that one verse, actually the second part of verse 33. And then we're going to go straight to 1 Peter. And if time permits, we'll get a little bit into Proverbs. Ephesians 5, 33b. Let me read the entire 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife. Here's the command to the man. Love your wife as himself. Now here's B. And the wife, see that she respect her husband. And that's going to be virgin, depending on what you're reading. Maybe say a reference. But it says, let every wife. Y'all missing it already. Every wife, every wife, if you marry, raise your hand. Every last one of you, let it see that you respect your husband. You don't have a choice if you want to be a the wife, but to respect your husband. Let every why respect the husband? Amen. Everybody say, I will. I will. Respect. Respect. respect my, husband. my husband. Let's see how we do that. Flip on over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter 3. Ladies, all you got to do is respect. You want that man to release the checkbook? You want that man to have your back? He just got off work and cooked food. Then you gotta learn how to respect him. You gotta learn how to respect him. Let me teach you. We're gonna teach you. We teach you a little bit. First one, likewise, you wives, be it subject to your own husband. <coughs> that any of you obey not the word, that you also will not word, will be won by the conversation of the wife. Now let, 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 let's let's stop right there in part A of one. Because many of you, particularly the new millennials and Z generations, you already stuck. Because your position is subject under somebody. So biblically, we gotta define it. This is a military term that talks about chain of command. By definition in the Hebrew, the word simply means yielding at the preference of another. Yielding at the preference of another. Now, if you know yield sign, traffic, driving, the sign, stop sign, yield sign, listen how this works. The first person who get there got the right one. Amen. That's too much? Was it easy? It don't matter. What kind of car you driving? It don't matter how big your car, how small his car. If he's there first, you gotta yield. Do I need to go right to Genesis? God made who first? He made Adam first. Even before the car, there was already a position of subjection. See, we get caught up. Well, it's because the car. No, the car says don't make you rule. But the authority had already been given to Adam before sin came on the scene. Yeah. So now, yield is not stopping. You may need to stop, but it's not to prevent you from getting where you're headed. Your husband is never to stop you from attaining what God has called you to do. He may have to slow you down because some of the things that God has said about the house that needs to be done. I ain't talking about house cleaning. I'm talking about the house that God has put him over that you may have to yield. But you'll never, if your husband. 
When you go back into Texas chapter 2, he's referring to the head of the house and how God treated the church, how Jesus treated the church. So ladies, you have this big circle and everything inside of this circle that that man is doing that says he's trying to be kingdom, God says you need to yield. You need to yield. But if he goes outside the parameters of this circle, if he's telling you to participate in activity that you know disagrees with God, if he tells you to participate in a burglary, if he tells you to do a menage of a trois, if he tells you to do anything that's outside of the scope of what Jesus did for the church, you don't have to do it. So this is not you putting yourself in a position to be used and abused. This is you putting yourself in a position. Good news is that the responsibility is not on you. Eve made the proof. Who did he call? <coughs> Adam, where are you? Not Eve, where are you? Because the responsibility is on Adam. So God said, not because you're weaker than a man. My wife's so stronger than me in so many areas, it's unbelievable. <coughs> but she's fragile. She's important. Not fragile as in weak, but fragile as in important. You know the package you get is a handle with care because it's fragile. You know why? Because she's what's going to make me better. So if I'm already made it, I'm bad. And the thing that's going to make me better get hurt, then I'm all messed up. So I gotta treat her like the weaker vessel, not because she's weak, but because she's priority. <laughs> because you are important. And so you gotta be able to understand that role. I'm yielding because of the very important nature of me. Because if I keep going and get ran over, then it's over. Because he can't make it without me. You gotta see what this word means. You are making the choice to yield because this is the divine order of God. Amen. Amen. Not because you're weak, not because she's stronger, not for any of those reasons that have been manipulated to make you feel unworthy. Amen. So you got to keep that first. And when you understand that, you 
and able to make a decision to yield. But here it is. All you got to do, ladies, is respect that man. And let me tell you how you do it. I've been dividing. The first thing he got to do, he got to be able to hear. He got to be able to hear. Not just in the church house, kingdom wise, but in your house. Not just during Christmas when you're visiting with the in laws, but he got to hear it and he got to hear it all the time. I'm in the text. I'm in the text. What it says. It says that they obey not the word, they also may not win a word. Be won by the conversation of their wives. Yes, yes. Most women, the majority, I'm talking about 99.9% of y'all, are just great people. It's how God made you. He made us, but he fashioned you. Yeah. That's what the Hebrews say, he fashioned you. He took more time, intricate detail, and made sure you had this, and made sure he just took clay and made us. But it took time to make you. And he says that if one of us is struggling, this is how you do it. You respect it. How do you respect it? With your words. That's two things. He says, respect it with your words, but sometimes, y'all ready? Just be quiet. Yes, yes. Hear it. Sometimes you don't need to hear nothing. Just be quiet. I learned this from my sister. Oh, we don't mad at the right here. We family soon. Oh, don't be mad at sister. Hold on. I learned this from them. I was telling them one day about what she needed to do. And she said, no, I can't do that because he won't go for it. I said, no, you need to do it anyway. So I came around and she asked, I'm doing something. I said, what you doing? She said, I'm going to do it. I said, he ain't doing it. She said, well, that's his job. So I said, you going to let it fall? She said, yeah. And I walked out of there. I said, man. What if more women would just let it fall? Give it to the man. This your job. I ain't doing it. If it don't get done, you are inside here. Most men, me, he made y'all one way, he made us another way. We ain't gonna let it fall. Won't come what we gotta do. But we won't do it. When we believe you want And you're going to do it over me. Yeah. You're going to do it after me. You're going to talk about how bad I did. But if you just let me do it. So I know you see what he's about to do his own. If it's not detrimental. Yeah. If it's not going to cause you to lose your house. But if it's going to cause you to cry a little bit tonight. Lose a little bit of peace. Lose it. That's how being learned. We got these new bad conditions. Me and Dee Thomas have been working on the admissions for all the while. Trying to get a program right, we can't do it. You know why? Because we can read the book. <laughs> Every day for the last two weeks, we've been saying, man, we need to read the book so we can figure out how this thing works. Uh, we ain't read the book. Because it just happened, we just ain't going to do that. But when we feel like that ain't working, we do something different. Now, we don't realize everything we done done still ain't working, so now it's going to make us read the book. Men learn best when we fall. Now, women, because y'all fall and y'all can't get back up. It's, it's, a little, you know, it's a little different. But a man to fall, God, y'all get the thing I missed there. Okay. This is what I got to do now. But the problem is, you ain't letting them fall. And then you got the reasons. You've experienced uh, things being turned over to your dad, to your grandparents, uh, to your previous boyfriend, or your previous marriage, and look where it got you. So you say, no, that ain't gonna never happen to me no more. I'm gonna get it done if I gotta do it all by myself. Those are the words of a man, not the woman, words of a woman. And when the roles have switched, we get chaos on the earth. And divorce rate is out of this world. So women, you got to hear, the man got to hear respect. He know he ain't done it right three, four times. Give it to him again. Let him do it. If he looks at you funny like, I need some help, he ain't going to say it because we got egos. I told you, we, 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 we 
opportunity. Our egos. We erase. We erase God's opportunities. Our egos. He made us that way. But 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 if He gives you that look, you just gotta know your spouse. This look. But I ain't even nice enough to put on that voice. <laughs> you look at it, and listen every day, and you, you try, you try hard. Yeah. Listen, no, he don't know where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> you just smile. You really want to, you really want to get us. Do something like this. That's a beautiful tree we just seen. <laughs> Lost some stuff, 
Very tragic stuff. You got depressed. I get all that. But now you at 240 pounds. You at more than your husband. Listen to me. I'm trying to help you. You at more than your husband, and you confused why he's looking at somebody else. Listen to what he says. He says, I don't want you to be overly concerned about it, but I think we done got to a place where we ain't concerned about it no more. You just can't go and put weave in your hair, get your nails done, put them things on, suck your stomach in, and then you get home to her, all that stuff. I
So he's going to beat up the man yet because you're looking at me like you're crazy. No. Well, I ain't going to get no divorce. But I ain't seen you tonight. I ain't going to get no divorce. But I want to cook it when I cook for the children. And if you don't want he just ain't going to eat. Because in your mind, you love him, but you ain't in love. So here's what you do. You go on. I'm trying to stay in the marriage because I'm saying I want to please God. I want to do it right. But I ain't going to respect him. And you think you're going to be smelled. It ain't going to work. If you're going to stay in the marriage, if you're trying to please God, you're trying to be equipped with the committee, with the covenant, you want to do it right, you got to love him, in love with him, and you got to respect him. You can't decide that, listen, I'm going to do it, I'm going to keep going to church, I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to keep doing this, but then get home and say, no, I ain't doing that. I have told you. I love you now. I ain't trying to get no divorce. But I ain't, I, I ain't gonna know that, because you ain't, uh-uh. That ain't gonna work. Listen to what the text says. He says, you, he says, I don't want to be, be the outward according to the way of the hand, the wind, the gold, and put it on the barrel. He says, but let it be hidden man in the heart, in that was not corruptible, even the ornament of the meat and the quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of a great price. Yeah. So, he, he, listen, he got to be able to see it. And not just the physical. We want you to look good on the outside. We need you to get your hair done. I tell my wife, we, we, we get your nail done. What's wrong? I said, I'm sure. You need to get that stuff done. But if you're looking good on the outside and ugly on the inside, you're just pretty ugly. And don't no man want no pretty ugly woman. We want you to be pretty pretty. Come up with some phrases and what it was in college was. My wife knows this. I say, Well, that's pretty pretty right now. And I was young and dumb. I didn't really mean it to be what I'm saying now, but but it, it, in my immaturity, it meant the same thing. We still got some that's pretty pretty. That, that meant like you can take her out, like you, you were just there. You, know, you, you spent some money on her, pretty pretty. Um, when I was young and dumb, that's what I thought it meant. I'm trying to show you the, the mindset of a man. Yeah. Even when we don't know the Lord, he's made us this way. We know when somebody pretty pretty. We know when somebody look good on the outside and they work me spending time and my money with because of who they are on the inside. And then we know people pretty up. Oh, Lord. We know that. That's your girl, man, you're crazy. They my girl. Oh, tramp. No. <laughs> We, we, we know, I'm telling you about men. And I'm telling you that God believes the same thing at a different level. He says, you spend so much time looking good on the outside. He says, but how much time are you going to spend looking good on the inside? He got to see it. He got to see it on the outside and he got to see it on the inside. Here's the challenge, ladies. If you start spending as much time as you spend in the mirror and take care of your makeup, buy a new wardrobe, and start spending time on praying about God, how can I serve my husband God? How can I make him feel like a man and respect him more? If you start spending more time on your knees saying, God, I, I've been trying to do it, but it don't seem like it's working. God, can you show me more creative and innovative ideas I need to do? Grow people in the house. Amen. Last thing, we out here. You got to be able to hear. He got to be able to see it. He got to be able to feel it. He got to be able to feel it. Now, if you know this, with seeing and hearing, I gave you two ways. Feel it, I gotta give you two ways. He gotta feel it as it relates that when he walk in the room and you was there before him, he walk in like the husband of the woman in Proverbs. Amen. That he didn't worry about being late. Because when you came in, you already have said something great about it. Where your husband? Oh, he out there because you know he running late, so that's why we always late, so we ain't gonna be in the mention. That's why we late. I don't even know why. <laughs> you walk in, he back there. He know if you done made something up. Oh no, he had to make 
she went out to get up close to the driveway and see how he's parking the car. Amen. You, you got to be able to make him feel it. You go to Genesis. When you read the rest of this text, it says, even, verse 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, calling him Lord. Listen, you know the text. When you go to Genesis chapter 18, he's 100 years old, she's 99. Mm -hmm. God don't promise they're going to have a son. Through this song, I'm going to birth the nation. Yeah. That ain't happening. <coughs> we know feel is feeling, but it's also sexual. Yeah. Let me tell you how we know. Because Sarah said, okay, Abraham, this ain't working. So you get to talk about it. You have a baby with her because she's young. So she knocked the door. She went old, she was young enough to produce the seed. But that wasn't the problem. <coughs> the problem was she was respecting her husband enough for the seed to be produced. When Abraham heard and fell out, See, you can say words, and he don't feel it, then it don't matter. So when she heard, and, and he believed that she meant that he was her Lord, that did something to his boys. Now, just because she made it feel good by speaking, that didn't make Isaac come. See, y'all see, don't want to talk about this part of it. So he felt it. So that made his groin do something. But then he had to use the groin. He had to feel something. That's how Isaac came. I'm going to bring up this song. I guess I got to go there. You think about a baby. I ain't talking about no baby. I know you don't want no more children. Some of y'all. But what's you been bound from? What have you been bearing about? What you've been trying to accomplish, you've been working hard to get this promotion, but everybody seems to go over you. What you've been trying to get delivered from in your life, but every time you do three months this good, then next month you back to the old you. You went a whole year not doing it, but now you might do it. What is it that you don't want to do no more, but you find yourself keep doing it? I'm telling you that it could be a very strong possibility that you ain't getting it because you ain't respecting your husband. Amen. Sarah wanted a baby. In this time, in this custom, it was as if she was cursed to be married. She wanted one. So she gave him sex all the time. I can believe that. Because she knew that was the only way to have a baby. So though your man needs sex as a part of respect, the sex has to be meaningful and he has to feel it. I want to help me today, dude. Yeah. He has to feel something when you're participating in this activity. It was when she called the Lord and he felt that she was making him feel like Lord that then he was able to produce a seed that brought a baby. Sarah couldn't get pregnant without a seed. Mm -hmm. I know people don't preach that time and say, oh, and Sarah called her, Lord, she got pregnant. No. Because they not had sex. Well, they wouldn't have sex because they was old now. She lied. Uh -huh. She lied when the angel told her. Amen. Should I have pleasure with my Lord? She said it. She said, Lord, right then. Look how many years that had taken place before she come back and say, Lord, again. <coughs> when the angel takes that pleasure with my Lord. So it's you, my ladies, who said, well, I'm just going to do it because I got to do it because it's my job as wife. And my pastor said, I got to give some. And I'm going to give you somebody else. Don't no man want it like that. We'll take it. <laughs> but we don't want it like that. <laughs> Sarah got herself to a place where she 
she was into it again. Right. Y'all ain't missing it. And it was not able in ability to produce a seed. We know that ain't the case. Ishmael. He has another baby with another woman. But that woman, when she lay with Abraham, felt something. Made Abraham feel like somebody. She respected him. So this time, when Simon says, my Lord, boy, it did something to and I'm telling you ladies, our ego is so big, it's so powerful, that when you begin, when we see and hear and feel respect, everything that you need to start happening. My wife ain't here, she had to go take her children to church, but I can stand up here and tell you that she know, because the level of respect she's given me, that ain't that she can move. Amen. Amen. I ain't saying me. Yeah. If she won, I'm gonna do what I need to do to get it. Because she showed me the utmost respect. Yes. If you have challenges with your husband, if you single and you think about getting married, you gotta make a decision that you're gonna respect him or don't marry him. Amen. And if you can't forgive him for all the other stuff that he done done, push the marriage back. Because if you go into it not respecting him, I'm telling you, it's going to be difficult for him to love you. Even though he's trying to be kingdom, it's going to be difficult for him to sacrifice for you. It's going to be difficult for him to serve you. He definitely ain't going to worry about sacrificing you. So you got to make a decision, man, that you're going to respect your husband. You're going to call him Lord. You're going to meet him. He's going to feel it. He's going to know it. He's going to hear it. And he's going to see it. <coughs> there is. We ordered something. For the ladies today. Some of the men received their all the men are not going to receive this yet because there's a little bit more we got to tell the man so he doesn't know how to be king. But I'm telling you, ladies, this all you need to know. This all you need to know. Okay. Hear me. To be a king of wife is respect your husband. He needs to hear it. He needs to see it. He needs to feel it. Now, being a little funny, but I'm dead serious. If you did not raise your hand and you mad, this is what the altar is. Because I can't judge you or begin to say that you, you may have been through so much woman that as you said, Pastor, it's just over. Can't do it. He's abused me verbally, physically. Committed adultery. He said everything that God has given them permission to get a divorce. I want to pray for you. You ain't got to stand, you ain't got to raise your hand. But I want to pray that you be absolutely sure. I'm not praying that you stay married to a man who beat you up. I'm praying that. I'm praying that whether you get divorced or not, that you get to a place that you can forgive. And if that forgiveness means that you got to leave him to do it, then you're going to be justified by the Bible in doing that. But I also want to pray that if there's any possible way for you to stay in the marriage and give it another shot, that you let and trust that God can do that. Amen. Many of you know my story. Let me hit my I called my wife by the name one time. But I've never physically, and you know, I maybe some verbal with my mother was screaming. But I committed a don't you? Not one time, not two times, not three times, but a lot of times. Now I won't say anything, but still. She had every reason to divorce me. But I guarantee she'll tell you today. 
that if she would have divorced me and married somebody else, how she's been treated over the last eight years, she couldn't have asked for more. Let me tell you about a man. Because we battle, because we're fighters, when we see a woman who stood with me when I was a fool, <laughs> when we do come into some knowledge and understanding, ain't nobody gonna disrespect my wife. Because she battled with me. And I'm telling you, ladies, the ones who feel that it's over, if there's any chance that you can stay and give it another shot, Get that man under some good teaching. I ain't trying to be biased, but I know a church. I know a pastor. That'll spend time with him. Amen. That'll challenge him. Amen. But give it a shot. <clears throat> so here's my prayer for you today. My prayer for every other lady that took this is that you simply continue to work and walk on the path of becoming the kingdom of life. But for you ladies, now I pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know some of the difficult heartaches, sleepless nights, so much pain that some of these women of God have had to go through. Father, they're still married today because they want to keep the covenant. But God, they're so busy. They don't even know how they're making it. They want to give up, but because they love you, they didn't even come to the reality that they don't love their husband anymore. I pray for that woman. Yeah. That before she makes another decision, before she takes another step, yeah. that God, if you can some kind of way, yes, yes, yes. do what you did to my wife and to this wife and to this woman. Yes, yes. And everything you did for me, you do it for that husband. Oh, God. And an awakening would come among them and they would realize how great and how precious this awesome woman has been to them. And they would want to serve them. They would want to do everything in their power to treat them the way they deserve to be treated. So I speak strength to this woman because it won't be easy. I speak courage. I speak faith because family members have told her it's time to leave and people have told So she's going to have to be bold to say, no, I'm going to give him another chance. So God, I speak strength into her life. I speak encouragement. I speak courageousness that she will be able to stand by herself and with her husband when other people may turn their backs on God. Because you can do it. How a living witness that you're able to do it. So do what needs to be done in that marriage. I believe that you can. And Father, for the one whose mind is made up, I pray that still forgiveness can be released upon that spouse so that they can continue to move on with their lives. I pray that if there's children, that there's still good relationships for the children's sake, that they can still respect each other and communicate properly to each other so that those kids can still see that though mom and dad are not together, they, they love me enough to, to respect each other. So God, we ask that as we come to a close today, that every woman that was gathered in this place today, that God, you give them what they need to be the king of life. You place them on this earth to be. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name.